Hi everyone, my name is Mark Joseph M. Chu, Project Development Officer 2 of the Pantawid Pamilyang Filipino Program. Today, I will be discussing the Beneficiary Data Management System of the program or the BDMS. BDMS is one of the major systems of the Pantawid Pamilyang Filipino Program or the 4Ps. Its goal is to ensure that all validated eligible households are enrolled in the program and the beneficiary data used in the program implementation is updated and accurate. The objectives of BDMS are to validate and verify the identity of the eligible households, to select the household grantee and children for education monitoring, and to record the information of the beneficiaries and reflect the updated data in the Pantawid Pamilya Information System or the PPIS. So what are the components of beneficiary data management? The first component is the beneficiary registration. It is a process wherein the identified eligible households are validated and registered in the program through the conduct of the community assembly or house-to-house -to -house validation. Next component is beneficiary updating. Beneficiary updating is the process of capturing and recording the changes in the profile of a household or any of its members. It aims to have a more accurate and updated data in the Pantawid Pamilya Information System that will be used in the monitoring of compliance. The last component is the Beneficiary Status Management. Beneficiary Status Management is the process of tagging households as temporary inactive or permanently no longer considered as beneficiaries of the program and therefore no longer eligible to receive grants. The reasons for the activation or the listing under the BDMS include but not limited to the following. Households that have no more eligible beneficiaries for compliance, multiple records of the households in the Pantawid Pamilya Information System, Households that move to the non-Pantawid Pamilya area. Households that move out of the area without prior notice. Households with pending case of duplicates. And households that are no longer interested to be enlisted in the program. The National Program Management Office or the NPMO shall process data from list tahanan and selects eligible households for registration based on the approved selection criteria and running of the eligibility check routine followed for the duplicity checking and migration of households in the PPIS. Then, the Regional Program Management Office prints and distributes the list and registration forms to Provincial Operations Office or POO and Municipal Operations Office or MOO. City or Municipal Links coordinate with the LGUs Post the list of eligible households and review roster for possible duplicates. The city or municipal link and registration work team conduct validation and registration of eligible households. Then, the POO or RPMO reviews and encodes in the PPIS data of the registered households. Regional director approves the registered households and finally, the NPMO will finalize the list of newly registered households. Now, let's discuss the step-by-step -step process of registration during community assembly. Step 1. Attendance Desk The staff would ask questions verifying the identity of the household's representative who would serve as respondent during the validation. The representative or respondent during the validation shall be part of the household roster. After verifying the identity of the household representative, have him or her sign opposite to his or her name and give him or her priority number and the household ID number. Step 2. Program Overview The program overview will be presented to the attendees focusing on the program description and the selection of potential households. The attendees will also be oriented on the process flow of the community assembly. Step 3. The household representative will present the requirements to the validator as the latter will validate the identity of the households based on the documents presented. Step 4. 
printing, signing, and releasing of certificate of validation. The printed pre-generated certificate of validation containing the pertinent encoded data will be signed by the household representative, validator, and the team leader of the validation team. This certificate of validation which serves as proof that the household has been validated will be issued to the household. Grievance Help Desk is installed to receive and record all the queries and grievances relating to the Panta with Familia operations from any interested individual, whether included in the list of potential beneficiaries or not. The Help Desk is situated within the Community Assembly premises but separate from the registration area so as not to hinder the regular process of registration. The purpose of the grievance desk is to entertain all issues and complaints during the assembly and at least provide initial feedback. These queries may include additional information about the program such as selection procedures, eligibility criteria, and the like. Officer assigned in the grievance desk should also be able to provide the briefing on households that are not eligible for registration. For the second component or the beneficiary updating, remember that it is a process of recording new or fresh information, status, facts, and data to correct outdated records. To elaborate, the primary purpose of updating is to gather, validate, report and record the changes that occurred in the status or condition of any member of the household beneficiary while under the program. Due to the nature of the data recorded in the Pantawid Familia Information System, which is primarily dynamic, it could be expected that changes in the status of beneficiaries will occur in the course of program implementation, which can directly or indirectly affect the monitoring of compliance of the household beneficiaries with the program conditions. Beneficiary updating has 12 types of update. The first type of update is newborn. This type of update includes the new child member in the household born out from the declared pregnancy of a family member. The supporting documents for this type of update are birth certificate, medical certificate for PWD newborn, and Barangay Health Certificate. The second type of update is change of address. This type of update applies to households who transferred residence to other Pantawid Familia program areas. There are four different levels of transaction for beneficiaries who transferred residence. First is transferring within Barangay. Next is transferring to other Barangay within city or municipality. Next is transferring to other area within region and lastly, transferring to other areas outside the region. The supporting documents for this type of update are Certificate from Barangay Captain Certificate of Residency from Old or New Address Certificate of Residency from Old or New Address where the request emanated and Case Assessment Report. Next type of update is update 3 or moving to non-Pantawid areas. This type of update is applicable only to households transferring to Kalayaan Group of Island and Batanes areas. The supporting document for this type of update are Certificate of Residency from Old or New Address of the Household and Certification from City or Municipal Link stating that the household was transferred to non-Pantawid Pamilya area. The next type of update is Update 4 or Health Facility. This update type captures the information on where the household members eligible to be monitored for health compliance are availing health services. The supporting document for this type of update is Barangay Health Certificate. The next type of update is Update 5 or School Facility. This update type captures the correction or updating of child's education information such as school, grade level, status on attending school, and reasons for not attending of children 3 to 18 years old in the household. The supporting document for this type of update is 
School Enrollment Certificate. Another type of update is Update 6 or Change of Grantee. This captures the change of grantee of the household due to the inability or unavailability of the previously designated grantee to fulfill his or her responsibilities, such as but not limited to attendance to Family Development Session or FDS and receipt of cash grants for the households. The following are the identified allowed reasons. Number one, death of the grantee. Number two, long absence of the grantee. Number three, old age or poor health. Number four, gender-related issues. And number five, grievance-related issues. The supporting document for this type of update are Number one is death certificate or certification from the tribal leader. Next is medical certificate. Next is senior citizen ID. And lastly, certification from municipal links for reasons A, B, and C. For 7 to 17-year-old replacement grantee, the supporting documents are letter signed by the proposed guardian, attested by the city or municipal link, True certification stating the willingness to stand as guardian of the orphan and will comply to the conditions of the program and social case study report prepared by a social worker. For 0 to 6 year old replacement grantee, the supporting documents are For grandparent as proposed guardian, you need a photocopy or certified true copy of birth certificate of the parent of the minor proving the relationship of the proposed guardian to the minor's parent or marriage contract of either parents of the minor, proving parent-child relationship to the proposed guardian. If the proposed guardian is the aunt or uncle of the child beneficiary, the supporting document or photocopy or certified true copy of birth certificate of the proposed guardian paired with the birth certificate of the parent of the minor or Marriage contract of the proposed guardian paired with the birth certificate of the either parent of the minor, proving relationship as siblings. And lastly, in the case wherein the proposed guardian is the cousin of the minor, the supporting documents are photocopy or certified true copy of birth certificate of the proposed guardian paired with the birth certificate of the minor or birth certificate of either parent of the orphan with birth certificate of the proposed guardian, proving relationship as nephew or niece of the parent of the minor. You also have to fill out update form 5 with the proposed guardian. Submit valid ID of the proposed guardian and a social case study report prepared by a social worker. In cases wherein there are no relatives in the area, no relatives who are willing to be guardian or the relatives are already Pantawid Pamilya beneficiaries, foster parents accredited or licensed by DSWD may be allowed. In extreme cases, the city or municipal social welfare development officer will stand as guardian but to a maximum of five households. The supporting documents needed to process the change of grantee in this case are number 1. Certification from city or municipal link that a thorough and exhaustive effort has been done. Number two, social case study report from the city or municipal social welfare development officer. And lastly, letter from the city or municipal social welfare development officer on the willingness to be the minor's guardian. The next type of update is update seven or disease, or the updating of deceased household members, especially those monitored by the program. The supporting document for this type of update is death certificate or certification from the tribal leader or chieftain. The next type of update is update 8 or additional household member. This type of update captures new member of the household who needs to be included in the roster reflected in the PPIS. The household member who can be included in the roster are the following. Number 1. Child coming back or legally adopted, or child of the household head, born before the date of the enumeration. Number two, child from succeeding pregnancy, or child born out of the pregnancy of a household member 
provided that either of the parents is in the family roster. The supporting documents for this type of update are Number one is birth certificate. Number two, letter from the household or grantee that the new member to be included in the roster is not a Pantawid Familia beneficiary from place of origin certified by the municipal link or social welfare assistant. The letter shall also include the name of the either of the parents in the roster. The next type of update, update 9 or basic information. This type of update captures the correction of basic information such as names, date of birth, sex, relationship to household head, solo parent status, disability status, marital status, and occupation. The basic information except for solo parent, disability, and marital statuses is allowed to be changed only once. Any succeeding changes shall be endorsed to the NPMO for processing. The supporting document for this type of update are birth certificate, marriage certificate, medical certificate or PWD ID, solo parent ID, and incident report if change of basic information is done more than once. The next type of update is update 10 or capturing or changing of IP affiliation. The supporting document for this type of update is Certificate of Tribal Membership from National Commission on Indigenous Peoples or Tribal Leader or Shifting. The next type of update is update 11 or selection or replacement of child beneficiary for education compliance. This update applies to children selected to be monitored for education conditionality. Selection is allowed only if the household does not reach the three children limit for education monitoring. This also applies to replacement of child beneficiary currently monitored for education by the program, provided that the reasons for replacement are as follows. Number one is disease. Number two is disability. And number three is with full academic scholarship. The supporting document for this type of update are Death Certificate of the Deceased Beneficiary for Reason A Medical Certificate indicating therein that the identified child is not capable to avail education services in any mode of delivery to any facility available for Reason B. And last, Letter from the Institution person or entity who sponsored the scholarship or letter from the household grantee indicating the availment of scholarship for reason C. Next is school enrollment certificate. And lastly, letter from the household grantee or head indicating the selection or replacement of the household's child if replacement shall be facilitated, the name of the replacement child shall also be specified in the letter. The last type of update is update 12 or capturing of pregnancy status. This type of update captures and records the pregnancy status of female household member while under the program. The following female members are eligible for this update. Number one is female head. Next is wife of the household head. Next is daughter of the household head. Next is granddaughter of the household head, and lastly, daughter-in-law of the household head. The supporting document for this type of update is Rural Health Unit or Barangay Health Station Certificate where the pregnant member of the household avails health services and shall indicate the last menstrual period. So let's review the 12 type of updates. Update 1, Newborn. Update 2, change of address. Update 3, move to non-Pantawid area. Update 4, health facility. Update 5, school facility. Update 6, change of grantee. Update 7, disease. Update 8, addition of new household member. Update 9, basic information. Update 10, capturing IP affiliation. Update 11, Child Replacement for CV Monitoring and Update 12, Capturing Pregnancy Status. The Beneficiary Updating System works 
through the involvement and participation of the beneficiary and the number of program implementers at different levels. Number one, the process starts with the grantee's file update. Filing of updates shall be done during the monthly family development sessions and or other assemblies. As long as the grantees can read and write legibly, they are encouraged to personally accomplish the BAS Form 5 assisted by the parent leader. Next step is the parent leader will verify information and documents submitted and signed the BAS Form 5 and endorses the accomplished BAS Form 5 and supporting documents to Social Welfare Assistant or City or Municipal Link. The Municipal Link or the Social Welfare Assistant receive updates, review accomplished BAS Form 5 against supporting documents. If update is valid and documents are complete, the Municipal Link or Social Welfare Assistant will sign BAS Form 5 and the updating acknowledgement receipt. The Municipal Link will encode updates if it can be encoded through offline bus and sends all update documents to the Provincial Operation Office for processing if cannot be encoded through offline bus. For online encoding, the Cluster Beneficiary Data Officer will receive updates, review accomplished bus form 5 against supporting documents, and if update is valid and documents are complete, he will encode the updates in the online bus, except for change of grantee. For offline updating, the Cluster Beneficiary Data Officer will consolidate and review the electronic offline data encoded and endorsed by the city or municipal links or social welfare assistance and will provide the updated offline data to the city or municipal links. For change of grantee, the Regional Beneficiary Data Officer will receive and review the accomplished BAS Form 5 and documents submitted by the Cluster Beneficiary Data Officer and encode in the online BAS. He will also provide feedback to Provincial Operation Office or Cluster Beneficiary Data Officer on the endorsed update. If supporting documents are incomplete, he will return it to POO for appropriate action. For offline updating, the Regional Beneficiary Data Officer will consolidate and review the electronic offline data endorsed by the Cluster Beneficiary Data Officers, endorse the consolidated offline data to Regional Information Technology Officer for pushing to the PPIS and recommends update for Regional Director's approval. The Regional Information Technology Officer will provide technical assistance to the Regional Beneficiary Data Officer in the updating process, especially during the encoding. He will push the consolidated offline updates to the PPIS. He will return the unsuccessful encoded update to the Regional Beneficiary Data Officer, if any. The Regional Information Technology Officer will generate and provide updated offline data to the Regional Beneficiary Data Officer. The Information Management Bureau will conduct rapid quality check on the push offline data. The IMB will upload the update offline data in the PPIS for the region's use. The Regional Director will approve the encoded updates the NPMO will process or facilitate any updates that cannot be processed or facilitated at the regional level due to the limitations in their access, policy and guidelines, and will provide updated household roster and grantee list to the Regional Beneficiary Data Officer for onward provision to the city or municipal links for their reference in giving feedback to the beneficiaries. The filed updates can be encoded either via online bus or offline bus modules. In encoding the filed updates, the user should have an account in the PPIS in order to access the system and to ensure accountability on the changes in the information of the household profile. The user accounts are the same for both modes of encoding. Via online bus module. Online bus module is part of the interface of the Pantawid Familia Information System or PPIS. It allows the encoder and beneficiary data officers 
to encode the valid file updates directly to the PPIS. This type of encoding requires direct connection to the DSWD network. This module can cater all types of updates transactions. Via Offline Bus Application It is a new alternative platform for encoding updates that allows the city or municipal link and social welfare assistant to encode file update transactions even without using internet connection and IP VPN that connects with the DSWD servers. The offline bus module is portable and can be installed in the laptop or desktop computer. Offline should be loaded with the updated offline data that is provided by the Regional Information Technology Officer through the Cluster Beneficiary Data Officers bi-monthly after the CV generation. Bus form is a tool that is used to capture changes as requested by the beneficiary or education partners to update the profile of a household member. There are two types of bus forms, bus form 5 and bus form 6. The bus form 5 must be filled out by the parent grantee and should indicate the needed information such as the household ID number, barangay, city or municipality, province where the household resides, date when the parent grantee filled out the form, and more importantly, the information that needs to be updated as applicable under the 12 types of updates. At the back page of the form are the instruction and reminders that will help the beneficiary and city or municipal link to properly accomplish the form before submitting it to the cluster focal person or RPMO. Update acknowledgement receipt shall be detached and should be given to the beneficiaries as a proof of filed update. Update Form 5 is always available at the Municipal Links Office and accessible to the parent leader and or grantee. The BAS Form 6 or Annex 2 is a tool of the education partners to capture the changes and corrections in the school records of a child beneficiary enrolled in the facility. The BAS Form 6 should be filled out and signed by the school principal or school coordinator. It is a tool distributed and collected to school facility along with the distribution and retrieval of CB Forms 2. To fill out update forms, the grantee should fill out the household and personal data first. Date filed, last name, first name, middle name, and extension name if any, household ID number, and complete address. This is an example on how to fill out update 2B or transferring to another barangay within city or municipality. The beneficiary should indicate his or her previous barangay address and his or her new barangay address. This is an example on how to fill out Update 4 or Health Facility. The beneficiary will indicate the name of member and check the box for attending monthly health checkups and consultations. The beneficiary will also have to write the complete name, address, and type of health facility where he or she previously and currently attending. This is an example on how to fill out Update 5 or school facility. Indicate the name of the child, check the box for attending school, and indicate the complete name and address of the previous school facility of the child and his or her grade level on the facility as well as the complete name and address of his or her new school facility and his or her new grade level. Household status refers to actual states of the household beneficiaries from the process of registration and validation, release of initial grants, verification of compliance, release of the second grants and succeeding grants, and beneficiary updating of household data. These are the proper identification of household status. Client status 1 or active. These are registered households of the program and are eligible to receive cash grants 
subject to compliance to the condition set by the program. Client Status 5 or GRS Fraud A status in the Pantawid Pamilya Information System assigned to a household as a result of a grievance case filed against the grantee who was proven to have committed any of the following. Collection of fees in any form, misrepresentation and provision of false information. Client Status 6 or Duplicates these are the households who have been validated and were found to have similar records with another household due to at least one of the following cases. Number one is same household grantee. Number two is same monitored children. And lastly, different grantees with the same household composition or members. Client status 8 or WAVE. This refers to households who are not interested, thus, voluntarily surrender their membership in the program through the signing of a waiver. Client Status 9 or Not Registered These are the households who were assessed as poor by the list tahanan and passed the eligibility check routine or ECR and are potential for registration based on the data of the households captured during the enumeration. Client Status 10 or GRS Ineligibility these are the households found to be ineligible as a result of grievance filed against the household questioning their eligibility to the program. Client Status 12 or Move Out of the Area Without Notice These are the households who are no longer found in their declared address and did not process request for transfer of residence. Client status 14 or no eligible 0 to 18 years old for CBS monitoring certified by the RPMO. These are the households validated and certified by RPMO as no longer having eligible member for compliance monitoring in the program. Client status 15 or no eligible member of household for CBS monitoring. These are the households who are identified by the system as no longer having eligible member for compliance monitoring in the program. Client Status 17 or GRS not eligible due to regular income. This refers to households who are potential or registered beneficiary who does not meet the minimum eligibility requirements of that program, that is, with regular income after running the proxy means test, which determines if the household has a regular source of income. Client status 18 or delisted due to non-registration. These are the households from sets 1 to 3 who are potential beneficiaries but did not express interest to be registered in the program. Client status 19 or grants temporarily on hold. Registered households who are monitored but have an ongoing validation of ineligibility case or inclusion error or with pending cases. Grants shall be released once the case is resolved in favor of the concerned beneficiary. Client Status 21 or Newly Registered for Initial Payroll Generation These are newly registered households being processed for initial non-compliant base payment. Once the initial grants were processed, these households will automatically change to household client status 1 or active on the following period. Client status 22 or unlocated household. These are identified potential household beneficiaries but was not found in the area. Client status 24 or suspended grants due to misbehavior of households. A status assigned to a household as a sanction to the beneficiary who has committed second offense of misusing the grants given to them in the form of gambling, vices, and pawning of cash cards. Beneficiaries assigned with this code are not entitled to receive grants for one period or equivalent to two months. Client Status 25 or Households with Eligible Children not in school. These are the households who were identified as eligible household for registration 
but all eligible children, our only eligible child, was validated to be not in school. So let us review household or client status. CS1 is active. 5. GRS fraud. 6. Duplicates. 8. Waived. 9. Not registered. 10. Ineligibility. 12. Move out of the area without notice. 14. No eligible 0 to 18 years old for CVS monitoring certified by RPMO. 15. No eligible member of household for CVS monitoring. 17. Not eligible due to regular income. 18. Delisted due to non-registration. 19. Grants temporarily on hold. 21. Newly registered for initial payroll generation. 22. Unlocated households 24. Suspended grants due to misbehavior of household and 25. Suspension due to non-compliance Why is it important to tag the household or member status appropriately? The intentional or negligent data manipulation and misinterpretation of Pantawid Pamilya by any field implementers may constitute administrative offenses of dishonesty, grave misconduct, and or conduct prejudicial to be the best interest of the service, which under the revised rules on administrative cases in the civil service. These are considered grave offenses and are punishable by law. In case of disallowance, all signatories in the validation report will share in the accountability. So now, we have learned BDMS as one of the major systems of the Pantawid Pamilya. Please bear in mind that an accurate and updated data of the Pantawid Pamilya beneficiaries can have an influence in the implementation of the program as well as in the cash grants that the program beneficiaries are receiving. Let us continue to ensure efficient facilitation of update requests to have a clean and accurate beneficiary data and a better delivery of social services to our partner beneficiaries. Thank you very much for listening.